Okay, hi hey everyone. Uh, my name is Nick Raymond. Uh, I'll be doing a, a talk today about getting started with breadboarding. Uh, do kind of a basic overview in the time that we have. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I started working at Make about four years ago as an engineering intern, and so I'd work in Make Labs. What we'd do there is we would test the projects that were going to be published in the magazine. So we would go through the author's article. We'd see if there were any uh, errors or if there was something that we couldn't understand from the uh, manuscript. And then we'd document that there at Make HQ, and then publish either our own photos or the author's photos um, into the magazine. And so uh, four years ago, I had no experience programming whatsoever. I I had a basic knowledge of electrical components. Um, and after you know, working there and getting some experience, I was able to successfully put together a CNC machine from some uh, kits, do a review, and uh, even learn to how to do some of my own um, soldering and circuit building, uh, as you see in the bottom right. So uh, pretty positive experience overall. And I started most of it uh, on a breadboard. So. Some of the common questions that sort of come up, either I'm talking to friends or talking to people uh, here at Maker Faire, are, you know, why would you want to use a breadboard at all? Um, secondly, you know, how does it work? What, how does the breadboard itself function? And what are the, uh, the different areas on the breadboard? Uh, what types of breadboards should I be using for my own projects? And how can I implement those either in projects I'm doing currently or projects that I have planned for the future? Um, the, the hardest question of all is usually, why won't my circuit work? And that's going to be a case-by-case -case basis. But there's a few things we can check, uh, kind of go through the list before you just give up and uh, throw it against the wall. Um, and then finally, you know, what do I do next? Once you have the circuit working on the breadboard and it functions the way you want to, uh, where do you go from there? So we'll kind of talk about some of those options as well. So throughout the talk, um, hopefully kind of keep the top picture in mind. Uh, you know, this is Wikipedia's version of uh, a breadboarding. Um, and it's been similar experience for myself using jumper wires. Uh, you've got a bunch of those black chips or like integrated circuits, ICs. Um, sometimes you have switches, capacitors, resistors, what have you, either making an analog or digital circuit. Or sometimes you're just going to wire up a microcontroller. Um, and when I'm going through the breadboarding process, my, my end goal is usually something in like the bottom screen. It's usually, hopefully, going to you know, function. It's going to be a circuit board of some sort. Um, this, again, is the, the professional uh, circuit boards that are in the CNC machine kit that I showed you earlier. Um, but the workflow is sort of you know, get your prototype onto a breadboard in some fashion, make sure that it works, test out the circuit. And then you know, if your end goal is to have a final finished product, um, you know, the workflow kind of progresses from there. Additionally, when you're, uh, you know, a reason to use a breadboard uh, is so you don't do this. And this is when you are in the soldering mode. You know, I learned to solder again four years ago, and and once you learn to solder, if you haven't already, um, you just want to start soldering components to breadboards, uh, even if you don't know if that's how they go. And so you don't want to get to the stage in the project where you're trying to put it together, you're trying to make a final component, and you don't know where the red wire goes. You don't know if it's going to work. Um, and so to avoid this, I would suggest you, know, you take the time, slow down, and grab a breadboard when possible. Um, additionally, the way I approach breadboarding is it's a skill set. It's, it's a process. Uh, so the more you do it, the, the better you'll become at it, the faster it'll, it'll get. Uh, the more you'll be able to problem solve your own circuits and uh, rely less and less on others to help you out. Um, but again, it's a way to quickly test the circuit if you have to. Uh, if you want to build just a prototype, you're not ready for the final stage of design. Or maybe you want to make a bunch of revisions to the circuit at hand. You want to see how it'll fit on the breadboard. Uh, what happens if I put the circuit components on this part? Can I reroute power? Can I save components that way? Um, and then I love it because at the end of the day, you can just take off those components. You don't have to go out and buy a new set. Nothing's soldered in place. You just pick them off, put them back in your electronics bin, and you can use them for a future project. So um, let's kind of go into the breadboard itself, maybe some of the layouts if it's new to you. Um, this is an illustration that we had one of our illustrators do from Make. Um, the breadboard comes in various sizes, as we'll show, but uh, the illustration has like a rectangular one. And there's basically uh, the, the breadboard is split into two sections. There's a, a deep trench visible running down the center of it. And that physically separates the left-hand side from the right-hand side. So those, there's no electrical connection between those two left and right-hand sides. 
Um, if you look in the top right hand corner, there's a, a battery or a, some kind of a power supply that you usually link into the breadboard. And again, there's a, a positive and negative terminal that's marked for convenience. You don't have to use those. Um, but that's usually a, a good place to start. And so um, with these types of breadboards, when you put in a positive or negative terminal into that location, the entire um, sort of up and down column will all be connected. That's the same node, the same circuit. Uh, likewise, with that negative terminal, that whole up and down row, um, excuse me, column, is going to be the same electrical circuit. We'll see when you move over to this sort of the, the multiple areas where you see the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or the 5, 10, 15, 20, those rows, um, those tie points, that's not the case. They actually run um, horizontal, um, well, as the next illustration will show. Um, again, in the bottom left-hand corner, there's the trench I was talking about. And that's great for using integrated circuits, like a 555 timer chip or uh, um, maybe like an AT Mega if you're going to emulate an Arduino. Um, and then the tie points, if that's what you want to call them, the little divots, the trenches, the little holes in here that you actually insert the legs of the components. Um, moving back to the top right-hand corner, you see there's an LED and a resistor. And so the one of the legs of the LED and the resistor, um, I wish I had a mouse. Um, they're actually tied together on the same node. And that's because when you put components on the same row, uh, this case row 16, um, that's the same electrical node connection. So uh, where you see the longer lead of the LED, that's connected to the negative terminal. And then the uh, resistor is actually connected to the positive terminal. Um, kind of moving ahead. Again, there's the power bus, the ground bus. Um, in that fashion. And then as shown in the top right-hand corner, that's, that's that connection. That's the same node. Um, again, there's some uh, conductivity components, resistor, ICs. The IC and the resistor, again, they're sharing that same connection. Um, in this way, again, from the example, you can see that the resistor is actually connecting the IC to the positive terminal or the positive uh, bus. In the bottom illustration, there are uh, example of jumper wires. And the jumper wires are another way to connect components to uh, your circuit. You can either use resistors, capacitors, components to physically connect um, uh, a point on the circuit to another point. Or you can use jumper cables. Um, we'll talk about jumper cables in a second. Just to refresh, here's some more uh, breadboards. They come in various sizes, like the, the board I have up here I prefer. It's a much larger platform. There's tons of area to work on. You can build a couple different components or a couple different circuits if you want in various spaces. Use the same um, positive and negative terminals. Or in the top left-hand corner, you could go as small as like a 2-inch by 3-inch breadboard. And that would actually fit on top of like a, a maker shield, if you're familiar. Uh, you could prototype on top of the Arduino itself. Or if you have microcontrollers on hand, the Raspberry Pi, the Arduino, the BeagleBone, they make uh, metal plastic boards. You can actually just physically connect the microcontroller and a breadboard on the same space. And that way, you can move them around, carry them together, uh, keep them kind of uh, organized. Um, also, in the top right, uh, you can get translucent uh, plastics. And then you can actually see the metal connections uh, under the plastic itself. And that's what's actually connecting the components together. There's a physical uh, connection when you push in the legs of the components. And they make contact with those electrical, uh, basically, there's two running pairs. Um, and they become connected. So similar to the board I have up here, what's not shown is the yellow, red, green, uh, yellow, red, um, uh, green, and black uh, twist connections. And you can actually use an external power supply to tie these together. And then from those connections, jump that over to any part of your breadboard that you want. Um, that's a great feature to have. It makes it. Um, so you can jump you know, maybe an uh, external power supply that's 12 volts and have a common ground, and then connect maybe a solenoid or uh, some higher uh, energy requiring device like a motor. And then here again are the jumper wires. So there's two flavors. There's the solid core, which are great for you can bend them and actually uh, add 90 degree elbows into them and really keep your board organized. Or you can use the stranded wire. And those are really great because they're flexible. You could actually make a circuit you can kind of move around. It'll actually give. Um, the one thing personally for me is when I use that stranded wire, I have a tendency of getting really messy really quick just because you're not uh, taking the uh, time to make these nice paths. Um, and so when you're troubleshooting, if you have to, that can make it a little challenging if you can't really visually see where your connections are going. 
Uh, with the solid core wire, you could buy them in these jumper packs. They're you know, $10, $12. They're color coded. They come pre-cut. The wires are stripped for you at the ends. You just push them in and they're great. Or you could just buy a spool of 22 gauge wire and make them yourself. Cut them to a, a custom length. Uh, just strip off maybe a quarter inch of the metal so you have a bare contact showing. Bend it at a 90 degree elbow and you're ready to go. Uh, a cheap alternative. So troubleshooting. When you do make your circuit and it doesn't work the way you want it to, uh, I would highly recommend having uh, a multimeter on hand. Uh, that'll allow you to test the voltage levels, make sure that you have power on those power rails, make sure that you didn't jump a wire to ground and you're just shorting out your board completely. Uh, you can also use the conductivity meter and make sure that the connections you think you made are actually connected to the locations you want. And then finally, um, if you have the stranded cable and it's a mess, sort of like that original picture I showed you, a quick test I like to do is you put your hand on top and you just sort of squish the cables. And if all of a sudden your lights start flickering or your motors start turning, you know it's a bad connection either with your jumper wires or the board itself. And so that will indicate either you need a new wire somewhere, you'll have to go through and figure it out, or maybe if your board is old or you've used it a bunch or you inherited it, there might be a bad connection itself on the breadboard. And that's actually pretty common um, and really frustrating because it's hard to figure it out unless you build a circuit and test it and it just doesn't work. Um, so there's that. Once the circuit is working properly, uh, you probably will see something, either two forms. Either you'll integrate the breadboard into your final product, and it'll look something like uh, Maker Camper Timothy's laptop arcade prototype. He embedded uh, the breadboard, the Arduino, and uh, a, a, basically a botched laptop into an acrylic enclosure, and he just kept that as is. He has the breadboard to the left-hand side of the control buttons, and um, he's using that. That's great if you were to bring it to Maker Faire. The only problem is in transport, if you put that on your luggage or maybe you shipped it, uh, the vibrations are likely to cause the jumper cables to come out. And if you didn't document it carefully, it'd be a heck of a time trying to figure out where those are supposed to go back in. Uh, so that's one thing to consider. So in that case, if you want to actually continue the prototyping process and make a final circuit, you can use a program that I really appreciate and like to use. It's called Fritzing. It's an open source program. And you can actually use it to lay out what the breadboard will look like. You can document it. And once you have the circuit looking how you want to on the computer, you can take it to the next stage. And you can actually produce a schematic. And from there, you can even produce a PCB layout and have the board etched or uh, machined um, or other types of manufacturing processes. Uh, so it's a great program. It runs on Mac and uh, Windows. It's great if you just don't have a, quite a, a sense of how you want the circuit to be laid out, but you know you want to have maybe a couple of resistors, uh, uh, maybe an Arduino. And um, it'll really help you visualize before you ever start building where the wires go, where the connections go. And then you can export it if you want to share that online. Um, oftentimes, I prefer to work off of this image because it's more uh, sort of mimics what you're going to be visually working with. Uh, sometimes schematics, the way they're made, they're a little, a little hard to interpret right off the bat. But um, here you know you need a breadboard, you need your Arduino, and a bunch of LEDs and resistors. And you can kind of work from there. So that's pretty much all that I had prepared. Um, thanks again for hanging out. Uh, I'll be at the Make booth if you guys haven't come over to visit there, talking about microcontrollers as well. Uh, but I thought I would take this time also if you had any specific questions about projects you're currently working on or wanted to work on, um, and just chat about some questions you had. Otherwise, yeah, that's it. Thanks.